Hello and welcome to week number 27 of the 2024 Baking Challenge. I can't believe that we have done six months and now we are into the second half of the year. We've had some wins, we've had some losses, but that's life, right? It comes and it goes. I'm pretty sure that today's pineapple upside down cake is going to be a slam dunk. So grab your ingredients and let's bake. Guys, pineapple upside down cake is a classic. I think that the first recipe came out in 1923. That's like seriously old. So there's been years to perfect it and hopefully I'm honestly don't have any doubt that King Arthur got it right. So you need a nine inch round pan. You need to grease that pan. I went ahead and used cooking spray. You also need to set your oven to 375. Make sure you check it first. That's right, 375 and start. Okay, so you've got your baking dish prepared here. You are going to start off with four tablespoons of melted butter, and you are going to combine that with a half a cup of brown sugar a fourth of a teaspoon of cinnamon and a fourth of a teaspoon of ginger. You're going to get that all mixed up. Um, I didn't have any regular brown sugar, so mine is dark brown sugar. Hopefully it's not gonna make like a huge difference. It's probably just gonna be a little more <laughs> of a sweet flavor. That's okay. You just want to make sure that it's all mixed up. And then we're going to drop it by spoonful into the cake pan. Now this is not a true nine inch cake pan. This is like eight and a half. It turns out I don't have a nine inch cake pan. So I'm just going to go with what we have here. Now mine kind of stays lumped up, but then it kind of starts to disperse. So I'm just going to drop this around. You're gonna wanna try to coat your pan as much as possible. Um, I feel like mine is not gonna be enough even though I'm using a slightly smaller pan. But what do I know? This is the first time I've made any kind of upside down anything. So this is exciting and I love trying new things. And I like pineapple upside down cake. All right, I'm going to use the back of my spoon to kind of press this around. Try to get that coating a little bit of everywhere. So the cool thing about upside down cakes is that you start with the topping because the topping goes in the bottom of the pan. The only change that I'm making to this recipe is that I'm not using cherries. I absolutely hate cherries. Uh, blame it on being a chronically ill kid in the 80s and uh, all the cough and cold medicine. Ugh. So you're gonna take your pineapple rings drained and you're going to start placing them in here. Put one in the center and then just kind of fill in from there. I may have to mush mine in because my pan is kind of small. Honestly, I didn't think like that half inch was going to be such a big deal, but here we are and it kind of is. That's okay. Now, if you're going to use cherries, this is where you're going to put them. You're going to put your cherries in the center of each one of your pineapple slices. And then if you wanted to use some chopped walnuts or pecans, you could fill in the blank spaces with those. Again, I'm not going to do that. Mine is going to be a pretty basic um, pineapple upside down cake because I am picky. Okay, I've set the pan aside and now we're going to make the cake. The cake consists of three tablespoons of room temperature butter. Mine got a little melty because I stuck it in 
the atrium and it is like 100 degrees in there. Oopsie, I just didn't wanna wait and I did not pre-plan this. So, my bad. That's okay, things happen. These things happen, stuff occurs, no biggie. I'm gonna put this on stir and just kind of get that butter moving. Now to the butter, we are going to add three fourths of a cup of sugar. All right. Dirty dishes everywhere. And you're gonna mix that until it's smooth. This could take a little bit. All right. Three tablespoons of room temperature butter, three fourths of a cup of sugar, mix until smooth. All right, that looks pretty smooth. Now we're going to beat in one egg. Now remember, your butter, your egg, and your milk should all be at room temperature. I don't know why, that's just what the directions say to do. What a beautiful color. You wanna get that completely mixed up before you add your salt and your baking powder. There we go. All right, to this we are going to add a half a teaspoon of salt and one and three fourth teaspoons of baking powder. If that seems like a lot, that's because it is. <laughs> that's okay. We are also going to add a teaspoon of vanilla. If it seems like that's not enough, I agree. But look at me sticking with the recipe and trusting the process, which you all know when it comes to vanilla, especially I don't like doing. <laughs> that's okay. Now at this point, if you wanted to go for that extra tropical kind of pineapple upside down cake, this is where you would add an eighth of a teaspoon of coconut extract. I hate coconut, I'm not gonna add it. I'm sure I actually wouldn't taste the coconut, but I'm still not gonna add it. So I don't have to, you can't make me <laughs> neener neener, not gonna do it. I am gonna stop and scrape the sides of my bowl though because I have some sugar up on the wall and some egg that's not completely incorporated. That's all right. We can stop it for that. All right, getting it back moving here. Next up, we are going to be alternating between our flour and our room temperature milk, okay? So what that means is you're just gonna add a little bit of the flour and then a little bit of the milk until it's all gone. So I'm just using a simple spoon here. Probably gonna add about three spoonfuls and I'm gonna get a different spoon for my milk. And I'm just gonna drizzle in some of this milk. This is going to be a very thick batter, just so you know. And it is okay if you have to stop your mixer and scrape the sides. I can almost guarantee with a thick batter you're gonna need to do that. Still, I'm kind of pouring the milk like on the sides where the flour is gathering and that's helping to, to draw it down.
kind of keeping an eye on how much I have of each thing left. It's a very pretty batter. See, this batter looks like silk. It is very, very pretty. The flour will be the last thing that you add in, at least according to the recipe. Although I kind of feel like the milk should be the last thing you add, so I think I'm gonna do it that way and we'll know if that was a mistake or not. After all, you're here to learn from my mistakes. Let that mixer do its thing. Except I am going to stop and scrape the sides around because I do have some flour sticking at the top. A little bit of butter sticking or uh, milk sticking up at the top too. I want to make sure that goes all the way down. Just give it a little more time. It just needs to be smooth. We don't want to over mix. And I think that's pretty smooth. Now, your first instinct may be to pour the batter in, but because it's so thick, you don't wanna do that. We are going to spoon the batter in. If you see that the sugar isn't shiny anymore, that's because it, the butter is starting to solidify. That's totally fine. Actually, I'm happy because that means that my pineapple isn't gonna move much while I'm putting my batter in. Be careful you're not slinging it all over your kitchen like I am. It's fine. Try to spoon some around the edges too. Or close to, not on the edges, you're gonna just want it close to the edges so that you can kind of smooth it that way. Honestly, I love pineapple upside down cake. It is one of my favorite summer treats. I've just never made it before. Um, but I love it when it's at a gathering or it's on a menu somewhere because I will, I will silently set the cherries aside or eat around them. Um, if they use coconut, I don't think I've ever tasted it. So... Now that I have this mostly, now that I have my pineapple mostly covered, I'm gonna go ahead and scrape my bowl and then just pour the rest in from the bowl. And then I'm gonna use my spatula to spread the batter around gently. Again, I'm trying really, really hard not to displace my pineapple, which honestly isn't gonna be such a huge problem for me because I have it wedged in there so well. I'm just, I'm being very light, very gentle with this, trying to make this even all the way to the edges. Fantastic. Okay, it's ready to go into the oven. All right, this is going into the oven for 30 to 35 minutes. Yes, I have mine on a baking sheet. That is because I've gotten used to putting things on a baking sheet. Sometimes my hands don't work well enough to grip the sides of something small. Also, if your cake or whatever you're putting in does tend to overflow, that's gonna protect your oven. All right, 30 to 35 minutes, set your timer, which I did not just do. Your cake is done when you put a toothpick in the center, not all the way to the bottom, because remember we have gooey stuff on the bottom. So just about halfway through the center and it comes out clean. Then you know your cake is done. You're gonna take that out. You're gonna set it on a towel or a hot pad. I've got those silicone ones. Set a timer for three minutes, okay? It's gonna sit for three minutes. After that three minutes, then we are going to put your plate or your platter, whatever, on top and we're going to flip it over. 30 seconds, you're gonna let it sit for 30 seconds to a minute. Then you're going to pull your pie, uh, your cake pan off. 
If anything sticks, that's okay. We can fix it. I'll show you how, because I'm sure mine is gonna stick. Okay, my cake is out of the oven and I'm not gonna look at it for three minutes because I'm just tempted to, three minutes, three minutes, set a timer. Don't look at it, walk away. I'll see you in three minutes. We can do this. Okay, that three minutes has honestly given the cake time to cool just enough to pull it away from the edges. So here we go. I'm going to put my platter over it and then I'm going to flip. Ah! Trying to get my fingers out from under this. Trying to get it moved to the center. Now you have to wait for 30 seconds. If you want to tap the bottom, you can. Just don't use like a knife to tap the edges. You can absolutely dent your cake pan that way. Ask me how I know. I also have a spoon and a fork in case I have some pineapple there uh, stuck to the end. I'm gonna pull it off quickly and put it back in place on top of my cake. Has it been 30 seconds yet? I don't know, but I feel like it's getting close. So I'm gonna move this over. <laughs> Grab this. I'm a mess. That's all right. Okay. Don't forget this cake pan is going to be hot. Use oven mitts. Give it a little jiggle here. Oh, look at that. All of my pineapple stayed in place. Oh, it looks so pretty. Sorry, I got stuff all over that oven mitt. Um, yeah, this looks beautiful. Look at this. That is just gorgeous. Even without the cherries, it's still super pretty. You can serve this cake warm, but I'm going to wait until mine is completely cooled and then I'll try it and I'll get back to you on how it tastes. So probably another half hour or so. I'll see you then. Okay, my cake is totally cooled off. It is absolutely beautiful. It looks spongy. The pineapple is nice and soft. It smells amazing. Um, I can't wait to try this. So first I'm gonna take a little bite of the cake. That is everything that I want in a cake. It's just sweet enough. Now let's try it with the pineapple. Mm-hmm. That kick of cinnamon and ginger with the um, tangy sweetness of the pineapple is so good. This may be my most favorite cake that we've made yet. So yay, two thumbs up for, for King Arthur. They, they have a winning recipe here yet again. If you enjoyed this summer treat, I hope that you hit the subscribe button below. I release these videos every single Saturday. You can also follow along over on the Facebook or Instagram page because every Wednesday morning, I'm gonna put out the ingredient list. That way you have plenty of time to get your shopping list done. I hope that you tune in next week when we have a very decadent sweet, sweet treat that the kiddo picked out. I'll see you then. Mm -hmm.